My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Kahn on Twitter or at JeffreyCahn.com. This podcast is entitled, A Unifying Framework for Digital in Business. Is there a unifying model to help decision makers sift their way through the digital echo chamber? Well, here's my version. For the past 18 months, as I've been working at the intersection of digital and oil and gas, I've been studying the leading digital technology categories, the various stages of the oil and gas value chain, which include upstream, midstream, and downstream, and the visible interplay between these two domains. Throughout my study, certain patterns keep repeating themselves. Sensors that generate so much data they outstrip human-level tools to analyze. Robots working optimally with high-quality operational and commercial data. And cloud computing environments appearing virtually everywhere in tandem with digital innovation. In hindsight, I had been hunting for a unifying model or a theory that tied these digital innovations together, predicted how these technologies behaved, and forecasted how they're likely to evolve. Woven throughout the model is a story about data, generating, analyzing, consuming, managing, and presenting data. Data is not generally viewed in oil and gas as a corporate resource on par with other assets like subsurface assets. Data management receives relatively little attention, and roles in data science are only just beginning to surface. Accountability for data in oil and gas is diffused and fragmented. But frankly, winning at digital means winning at data. The first element in the model is the Internet of Things, things that generate data. Sensors generate enormous quantities of new information with great diversity in form and content and at ever-declining costs. They're appearing on virtually everything, pumps, valves, vehicles, vessels, and people. Oil and gas, as an asset-intense industry, drives demand for Internet-connected things. The trajectory is pretty clear. Smaller, cheaper, more capacity, lower power, encrypted, and connected. More smarts embedded in the sensors means that these devices will be able to do more and take on more local work. So instead of 10 unique sensors on a thing, there will only be one super capable sensor. The next element in the model is artificial intelligence. Only the modern tools of machine learning and artificial intelligence are able to process the immense volumes of data that these sensors generate. The breakthrough technologies of the 1990s, spreadsheets and personal computers, are not up to the task of storing, manipulating, and analyzing the rapidly rising tide of data. Spreadsheets are not going away, but they're no match for the kinds of processing needs we now face. Artificial intelligence drives demand for data science professionals and is a key reason why universities and technical schools are rapidly revamping their training programs to incorporate more emphasis on the data professions. The amount of money and investment pouring into artificial intelligence, coupled with the phenomenon of fleet learning, that is, individual AI engines that share what each other learn the instant they learn it, point to constantly falling cost and improving capability. Eventually, job design starts with AI and incorporates the human attributes rather than the other way around. Next, robots apply the data. Autonomous technologies, or robots, consume this AI-interpreted data to carry out real work. Heavy haulers in the oil sands mines are good examples. Their onboard cameras and sensors feed data into AI machines to interpret the real world and its hazards, and the hauler starts, stops, turns, and accelerates. For the moment, a human controller is manipulating these machines, but in time, even that task becomes unnecessary. And robots are not confined to the field. Increasingly, robots are office-bound, and others exist as services available in the cloud, accessed through a web browser. In the future, many industrial machines, like air conditioners, water pumps, sprinklers, and compressors, will have onboard AI capabilities through which they will make increasingly smart decisions. These decisions include, given a set of changing conditions, when to run, at what pace, and using what resources, at what cost. Today, only humans can make these decisions or don't make them at all. And cloud stores the data. Cloud computing is the logical place to store all the data and house the analytics. Companies can use their own proprietary storage and computer systems, but cloud is much faster to deploy, is more secure, and can ramp up and down more easily. The volume of data in play suggests that a cloud strategy is pretty much a one-way street. There's no reversing course. For technology providers, cloud is very compelling. 
Instead of developing for multiple database environments, they select one on which they will become very capable. Upgrades and patch releases are executed with agility. No more years-long upgrade cycles. Amazon is said to release hundreds of thousands of software updates a year, something not possible if Amazon software is installed on all kinds of different customer premises. Software distribution is via download from stores, not shipped on CDs. Users subscribe to services rather than obtain licenses to use, a model that is much easier for businesses to control. All of those sensors that I've mentioned need the occasional or frequent patches to deal with viruses and attacks too. The only practical and cost-effective way to maintain software reliability on these sensors is through cloud-enabled subscription and distribution. Cloud contracts are very easy to acquire and are often embedded inside service agreements and companies find themselves with hundreds of cloud-enabled solutions over time, driving interest in cloud interoperability, data standards, and integration between cloud environments. The end of the traditional software business model, which has many implications for how companies govern their use of technology, is rapidly approaching. Next, blockchain, which provides trust. The rapid growth of sensor technology, all these robots, and cloud analytics drives the need for a new trust mechanism that is not human-centric, and it will be blockchain. Blockchain technology monitors the state of the sensors, data movements, the AI engines, and the robots to assure that they are reliable and not compromised. By assuring trust, blockchain confers agency on the robots, allowing them to operate without human supervision or human intervention. This has spillover effects on traditional people-based business processes, such as loyalty. Robots with agency might not be influenced by loyalty schemes. Blockchain opens up entirely new business models, such as asset sharing. Instead of a business needing to own an asset, it can subscribe to the asset and pay only for the cycles consumed, which are recorded with trust on blockchain. Balance sheets are transformed when long-life, low-utilization assets can be available only when needed. And ERP systems, enterprise resource planning systems, enable the commercial environment. ERP systems are themselves becoming digital and are a key part of the future where they support the commercial processes of buying, selling, tracking, and measuring. In time, blockchain technology displaces some commercial functions too, but for the time being, ERP is going to be the commercial backbone. ERP systems now embed artificial intelligence engines and blockchain support within which makes them potentially much more useful across a broader sweep of the organization. Integrating operational assets with commercial ERP data is a defining feature of digital. A compressor uses its own onboard AI capabilities to decide which power source to use based on incoming weather and the market price of power, contract for that power, and then pay for it as a single integrated transaction. Next, agile methods are how digital gets done. Digital innovation requires faster ways of getting things built and deployed, and Agile is the language and method of streamlined work practices. Hand in hand with Agile are faster ways to introduce change to operating environments, or DevOps, and better ways of interacting with technology, or user experience, UX. The logic of separate technology organizations, one for commercial technology that delivers business change in one fashion, and a completely different organization for operational technology, and managed in a completely different fashion, falls away. IT and OT need to work together to deliver digital solutions and need a common way of working. Agile is the basis for that collaboration. Industry leaders today merge their IT and OT organizations into one unit with one executive accountability. And finally, people manage change. The future of work for people is designing and building digital environments that integrate these digital innovations. Multidisciplinary teams that assemble new methods of working, deep data skills, process modelers, system integrators, and business model designers work together to construct new digital solutions using these agile methods. Helping people cope with change relies on our human-only skills of creativity, empathy, storytelling, teamwork, and problem solving. Business needs both new kinds of talent and purposeful reskilling of existing talent for a digital world, as the methods of working, stage gate and asset centric, give way to agile and data centric. For example, robots require their own handlers, AI needs mathematicians, and the mountain of data calls out for data scientists. Dozens of unfilled jobs for individuals with these skills are listed on the many job sites, not just for oil and gas, 
but in many other industries that are experiencing the exact same digital wave. So far, I found this model to be very helpful in explaining the interplay between the various features of a digital world and how they work together, and I hope you do too. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.